All right, so just about a couple uh, words on Half-Life. Uh, again, they can vary widely. All right. Uh, so the Half-Life for Radon 220 is one minute. So every minute you're losing half of those uh, radioactive isotopes. So if you start out with a million, after one million minute, you've got 500,000, 250, 125, and just keeps on going down and down and down. So very short half-life. So what does that mean about the uh, stability of radon-220? It's pretty unstable. So it's got a short half-life, it's fairly unstable. Now, in contrast, this is a good, I like talking about radon because it's a good uh, discussion of chemical versus nuclear changes. What is radon? Where is radon on the periodic table? Rn. I guess it's not up there. Rn is at radons. It's a noble gas. Yeah, it is in group 18, 8A. It's a noble gas. And what do we know about noble gases? They're very stable. Well, it depends on what you're talking about. Radon is very stable chemically, meaning its electron configuration is very stable. It's never going to form bonds with anything else. But its nucleus is very unstable. And so it will break down very rapidly with a half-life of one minute uh, via a nuclear decay process. So chemically it's stable, nuclear-wise it's very unstable. And that is a really good example of what's, just, they're just they're two different things. Chemical reactions and nuclear reactions are just two different things. They're not even, pretty much not even related, okay? Chemical reactions are all about the electrons. Nuclear reactions are all about the nucleus, protons and neutrons. So chemically, but, um, what I mean by that, with whether or not it will form or uh, chemical bonds, covalent bonds, ionic bonds. And radon, it's got octet rule satisfied. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to gain electrons. It's not going to lose electrons. It's not going to form covalent bonds. It's happy as a clam in terms of its electron configuration. It turns out its nucleus is not very stable. And this is actual, so if if you, you know, read about radiation, there's background levels of radiation. Like everybody experiences radiation every day from lots of different sources. We talked about there's radioactive isotopes in your body that are contributing to that really small amount. Um, but radon is one uh, source of background radiation because it is the daughter isotope in the decay process for lots of the other radioactive isotopes like uranium, thorium, uh, probably radon, uh, lots of the rare earth elements, or the, at least the lanthanides um, that are radioactive, decay into radon. And where do we find most of those radioactive isotopes? In the Earth's crust. Okay, that's where we would go mine them. So they're, in, they're present in the Earth, and they're decaying down there, whether or not we dig them up, and they're producing some radon. And then what did we just say radon was? What family it is? No, no gas. And so it's a gas. So guess what? It seeps up through the Earth's crust constantly. And so it's constantly coming out of Earth. And there are areas of the country and areas of the world where radon is more of a problem than others. And so even in parts of the country in the U.S. where you have basements, we don't have to worry about that. Some places that have basements, they have to have radon pumps. They have to constantly be pumping air out of their uh, basements to make sure it's uh, safe because radon can come through the basements. They call them radon pumps. They're, they're, they're an exhaust fan. I mean, it's not anything crazy. <laughs> they just they call it that to charge more, I bet. All right, so yeah, that's the story of radon. I don't think we have much, because of the geology of Florida, we wouldn't have any radon anyways. All right, so here's some more isotopes uh, and their half-lives. So thorium and uranium, 4.5 billion years. That's like the age of the Earth. Uh, thorium-232, 1.4 times 10 to the 10th, so that's 14 billion years, that's the age of the universe. All right, so these are really stable, very long half-lives, but they still are radioactive. Carbon-14, 5,730 years, they're radon under a minute. Thorium-219, a microsecond, so that's how unstable that is. So they can vary widely. And as we uh, briefly talked about yesterday, what you use to date materials has to coincide with how old it is. I think, I don't remember, I think you can use carbon-14 up to things that are like in the 60,000 years old range. Past that, there's just not enough carbon-14 left to detect in the lab. 
And so you use thorium lead, uranium lead ratios. I know there's a car or argon potassium ratio you can also use to figure out how old things are that are like millions of years old. Like the T-Rex I was gonna dig up. <laughs> 